Hello and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Matt Tardiff and I work primarily as a freelance animator and teach game animation under the game art department at Full Sail University. So now we're going to talk about montage or animontage, however you want to say it. So montage is a way of uh, creating or putting animations together in sections and being able to decide when to play those animations via um, the state machine and the blueprint. So I'm ripping this right out of the um, Unreal docs. You can think of montage like a playlist. So as in a playlist, you can say, I want to play song number one, and then song number 32, and song 15, each of these going from one to another. You have that control, and you have that control in the montage. So, and we'll look at, look, um, we'll look more at that when we jump over to Unreal 4, but briefly, I wanted to look at Maya and talk about just the animations where you're going to jump from uh, Maya into Unreal. So, iteration is absolutely crucial. You don't want to create a super polished animation, then get it into the engine and realize it doesn't work, or it's too slow, or it's too fast. So, all I did was create one pose, basically two poses here, from idle to shoot, shoot cycle, and then 17 to 22. Because that's all I want. I know that's the way I want to do it. And then I'm going to bring it into Unreal and say, all right, well, playing 1 to 12, is that too slow or is that too fast? I mean, it's not going to be too fast. Or do I want to, say, play it between 1 and 6? So it immediately goes from here to the loop. So that might be a better choice, but I'm going to leave it as 12. And I think I've already got it set up in Unreal as 12. So, again, iteration is absolutely crucial. You need to know how how it's going to work in the engine before you get it back into Maya and start adding breakdowns and whatnot. Don't waste your time. Okay, so let's go over, let's go ahead and jump over to uh, Unreal. Okay, so we've obviously found our way over to Unreal. So in my character area, I'm going to right-click in the gray and go to Animation, Animation, Montage attach it to the appropriate skeleton and hit enter. So on that I'm going to call it Zach Montage and open it up. So the montage is broken up into three areas. We have the sections, the slots, and the branch point. We'll just start with the uh, slots first. So the slots are, are where you store your animations. It's going to store any number of animations. And it, going back to the analogy that I talked about before of music and playlists and albums, you can think of slots as the album. We have our sections. There has to at least be one section here, and that's why we have the default. So the sections can be thought of as the playlist. So with your album being the slot containing all of the animations, the, the sections are where we can cut these animations up to say um, when we want to play them, how, what order do we want to play them in, and then we have the branch point, which can be used to switch animations within the montage and switch sections. And uh, for example, the, you have a loop animation. In order to break out of that loop animation to play another animation, we need a branch point. So at that point, you can kind of think of the, the branch point as breaking the loop out of jail to some degree, giving it its freedom. Now it's time to set it up. So remember, sections slots and branch. So we're going to drag the animations into the slots. There you go. And there you go. So when you drag animations into the slots, it's always going to be top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Next, we need to create sections. So by default, there is always going to be, you need to at least have one section on the section bar. And so we're given a default, great. So we're just going to go into new montage section and say Zach underscore draw. So now we can take this and grab the default, move it out of the way. Zach draw will snap there. Right click, delete montage, and good to go. So now we need to create a couple more. So new montage section, Zach, shoot. And one more. Zach. Return. 
And then I'll go in here and grab the the uh, section and try to get it right on the line. So remember sections are what allow or gives us the ability to say when an animation plays. All right, so let's go down here. I'll worry about that slot name just a bit. So now we have each of these laid out under sections. So I'm going to hit clear so that each of these are one on top of each other. And let me, you can preview each of these. Zack shoot, Zack returns, and as long as it's not looping, so it'll return to the T-bows every time. Zack shoot, and Zack burn. Okay, so what we're going to do is, since I said in this section we can play, we can say what animations to play whenever we need. So I'm going to say Zack draw. Okay, so it's orange, and then I want Zack shoot, and in order to make Zack shoot loop, I'm going to have to hit it again and hit that again. So when it's blue, you know it's going to loop. And as you can see, he's looping. Now the only problem is we can't get out of this at the moment. I can't put a Zach return because it's looping back and forth. So it doesn't know. It's basically trapped. It's in jail. It doesn't know how to get out. So this is where we add a branch, branch point. Branch points, or yeah, branch points allow you to um, switch, be switch, switch to and between animations within a montage. Let me break it down. That's the simplest explanation. So I'm going to create a breakpoint here. Break, break, branch. Sorry, and say jailbreak. So I'm going to put it here at the end to say. When he's done shooting, if I'm no longer looping, it's going to give it a chance to not snap right to Zach return. It'll give it a chance to um, uh, blend into that to some degree. So now we need to give it a slot name. So the slot name is what we're going to use to, when we're in the, um, the state machine, we'll call this and be able to communicate within a montage. So I'll just call it attack. Oh yeah, not that kind of attack. A good spelling attack. All right, hit save. And now we're back to the main area. So I'm not gonna go over blueprints and state machines and inputs and stuff like that. It's a whole other video in itself. It's, a, it's involved, but I'll at least show you. So if we go over to the animation blueprint and take a look at, uh, let's go ahead and compile. All right. So we're going, we have the initial setup for movement and whatnot. We've added all this other stuff into it. Cast to zap character, target is shooting, set variables, the branch, do once, shoot, and on and on and on. And I borrowed this from online, so it's not something I set up from scratch. And so that's the um, event graph. And then we have the animation graph, which by default, this didn't exist. That just was the default to final animation pose. But then we created this slot node. This is the attack that we, uh, from the anim montage that we have. And opening up the default machine, I just used the same simple setup for the idle jump, jump idle, jump land, as far as the transitions and stuff. So that was fairly simple. And one last thing is going to file, whoops, editor, edit, project settings, going over to input, and creating another action, shoot, uh, which is going to relate to blueprint, uh, left mouse button. So whenever I click the left mouse button, it uh, it does its thing. So it should right now do its thing as soon. So yeah, so I draw the weapon, I'm holding down the left mouse button, it's uh, looping, 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 and I left go the left mouse button and it goes right back to the idle. So pretty cool. And I notice as I'm drawing, it's too slow. So iterations, iterations, iterations as I 
stated before, it's too slow, so I can move it from 12 to 6 and probably get a better result. Okay, so thank you. This is the end of the montage introduction, and I hope you have digested all of this information. So thank you for choosing 3dmotive.com for all your tutorial and information needs.